The Yak 9U is the original. In today's video, you will learn how to fly the P-51 from 3.3 to 6.3. First I want you to take a look at the stat card. And now ignore the stat card because it's full of lies. All you need to know is that every P-51 has a great top speed, great energy retention and good guns, great payload options for ground RB. It has a bad turn rate when at low speed, above 600 kmh your rudder stops working, the fuel load makes your planes heavier than it already is and its climb rate is average at best. The P-51 was made to escort bombers, bomb ground targets and have some capability to fight this guys here. When that all sounds similar, that's cause all of this sounds like the P-47 and that's exactly how you play like. While the P-47 has a better armament you are more agile and have better overall performance for dogfights. To the gameplay, first make yourself a ace combat playlist cause you will need to carry until your back hurts. With every P-51, climb up to 2600 meters at 20 degrees and from there between 15 to 18 degrees cause your engine automatically changes the supercharger gear. You have the worst performance between 2600 to 4200 meters. Now make sure that you are the highest plane in the area or at least at the same altitude. You are an energy fighter, means you need to know every maneuver you make. If you lose too much energy you will simply die. If you see that your enemy is starting to turn fight you, just disengage. You don't have to fight if you have a disadvantage. That's why using your top speed is very important. You can choose when you want to attack and shape the situation how you want. That's why playing this plane in a squad is highly recommended. The combination P-51 and Spitfire where double P-51 is really great and offers carry potential. In this plane you can just dive on the enemy and run away, cause of the great energy retention. Just don't do it too fast to not waste too much energy. Patience is needed. Now the question is, what about other energy fighters like the BF-109 and that's quite the topic. You outturn the BF-109 in high speeds, because of your awesome flaps that open at 660 kmh, but when it's going vertical, the BF-109 wins cause of its better acceleration and climb characteristics. If you play the P-51 right, you will be the most annoying and dangerous enemy in the lobby. The option to leave whenever you want is, in the right hands, very strong. And the other way around, the enemy will never be able to run away cause of your speed, that means he has to turn to face you, making him waste energy in the progress. Now we go to the most competitive P-51 and that's the C version. It has only 4 times 12.7 millimeters, but that's enough to kill every plane at its BR. Don't forget that your guns have the highest velocity for planes, but watch out to don't die in the end and play safe.
for its belts, use ground targets or tracers. The incendiary inside the bullets make it easy to let people go off in flames. In situations where you are outnumbered, you have to think twice what you're gonna do. Remember, you can leave at any point, but it would be a real waste to not use your energy against the enemy. That's also a good way to set up energy traps like the chandelle you will see shortly. You can find this version in the US, Japanese, French and Swedish tech tree, but is premium. Next on the list would be the first plane of the D-Line, but the D-5 can't be recommended. Instead, play the D-20 at the same BR. It's better in everything, but is premium for the US tech tree. You can still find it in the normal Swedish, Israeli and Chinese tech tree. It also gets 2 by 12.7 mm extra, giving it 50% more firepower than the C version. The radiators can also be fully open, because of the Meredith effect. It functions just like jets, where you push hot air out of the radiator, giving your plane like a little rocket boost. That negates the drag of the external radiator. It's pretty simple, you dive down, kill, go back up. It's called boom and zoom. If you need to get distance from the enemy, you don't go back up, but shallow climb at 0 to 15 degrees. The reason you can keep boom and zoom the enemy is, that you have the lowest drag coefficient of all prop planes. That means that you die very fast, and lose very slow on speed. It's also the first B-51 that can carry 2x 1,000 pound bombs and rockets. The D-30 is the peak of the line and a real beast. It has a stronger boost, giving it a better turn rate, better climb rate and better acceleration. You really feel like a jet when you fight enemies at your BR. Just be aware that you can get into the Ju-288 spam at 6.0. That also means you will see BF-109 K4, Griffin Spitfires, Yak-9U and Ta-152. If you have an enemy behind you you can't outturn, just dive straight down. No other plane can follow your dive, because of drag and wing rip speed.
Stuff like zeros, spitfires, or anything slow shouldn't be any problem. As long you stay fast and cautious, you are like untouchable to them, making it possible to negate the number advantage. Flying AP-51 alone is a true test of your knowledge about energy fighting. You will most often have teams that don't climb at all, where in the end you will have to fight 3 to 4 enemies to still win the game. The P-51 is perfect for this situations, cause of the amount of fuel, ammo, and speed you have. A low fuel P-51 is scary to fight. This fight here will show you how untouchable AP-51 can really be. The only planes that are dangerous, are planes with a high top speed like Yak-9U, Yak-3 VK-107 and Gryphon Spitfires. In that case, you need to set up an energy advantage by climbing. You should only attack when you have the energy and positional advantage. Other stuff like BF-109K4, K-84 or Tempest can be beaten in a dogfight. Besides that it can also be used in a ground 5.3 to 5.7 deck as fighter bomber. The 12.7 mm can also be effectively used against light armored targets like AAs or armored cars. The last P-51 is by far the best prop plane in-game or at least on one step with the Spitfire MK-24. It's the Super Prop P-51H5. Like every Super Prop, you lose all your weaknesses from before like, bad turn rate, lose of rudder and even a stronger engine, making you the fastest prop plane of the world.
The only flaw is that you fight jets as well, in that case just climb with your superior climb rate and start making overshoots or boom and zoom them. Your Packard Merlin 1650-9 engine produces more power than the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine from the Spitfire MK24. Combine that with the P51 airframe and you get an exceptional performance. This video is already too long for me. In the end, the P-51 is worth playing if you can handle your emotions and don't attack the first person that you see. It's like with the BF-109, if you die with the P-51, it's not the plane's fault, but yours.